What's up, y'all? It's your girl, Sakina, and I'm back for another review. This is my review for The Real Housewives of Salt Lake City. This is season two, episode 13. Let's go ahead and hop right into it, y'all. Last week, we know that the ladies left Colorado with a divided house, okay? It was the blondes versus everybody. After everybody flipped on them and made it seem as if they were the problem, when Lisa came to the girls with the BS in regards to Mary, Cameron, and the mortgage in her church. So... Everybody is literally telling their sides of what happened. We have Lisa telling John, Heather telling her daughter, um, uh, what's her name? Whitney telling Justin, her husband, um, what's her name? Mary telling Robert Sr. And then you have, um, I, this is who I keep trying to, I keep forgetting. The new girl, what's her name? And I'm not trying to be shady. I keep wanting to say Lisa, but that's not her name. Jenny. Jenny telling Dewey about the situation. So Lisa is telling John, everybody is ignoring the facts and they're acting like they're big and bad, but really they're just sheep. And I'm like, yeah, okay, they may be sheep, but you're a wolf in sheep's clothing. So let's not do that, okay? You are the one who really did orchestrate this whole thing. And the fact that you're acting as if you did not is beyond me. Of course, we would not expect you to tell the truth in regards to you trying to bring this mess up to spill tea on Mary. But let's call it the, uh, what it is. Uh, uh, the blondes already got you figured out, Miss Ma'am, and you just don't like the fact that they calling you on your shit. So then she gets a text message from an unknown, uh, unknown number, and it's actually Jen inviting her to go out for coffee and her husband is like, okay, well, are you going to respond to it? And she was like, no, she really just wants to distance herself from Jen. So we already know Jen is reaching out to the girls, trying to see what's going on, trying to see who is going to be there for her. And this is the time that will reveal whether or not the girls are going to stick beside her or they're going to leave her behind. And the way that it's looking with Lisa, she's going to leave you in the dust, sis. Now, Lisa did say that she was going to get back with Jen when she's ready, but she did bring up the fact that she brought up the assistant with the conversation that her and Jen had down at the Wolf photo shoot, but she thought that they were okay once they, you know, squashed everything, but then remember Jen sent text messages cussing her out saying that she wasn't her friend, blah, blah, blah. So I understand why she would be on the reserve a little bit when it came down to Jen because it's like, yeah, last time I talked to you, you was cussing me down after I thought that we was all good. Now you done got in trouble with the feds and now you want to reach out to me. Since I don't, mm, hold on, let, let me process these things a little bit and then I'll get back to you when I'm ready. So I'm actually not going to blame her for that. And then we see that Heather receives a call from Jen as well. And she wants to meet up with Heather the same day. And Heather was like, absolutely, let's do it. And uh, her daughter was actually like nudging her to do it. Her daughter is so pretty. She's like, Heather has some really pretty daughters. But um, yes, they gonna meet up later down at the steakhouse, child. And we just gonna see what happens. So let's get straight into it. They go and meet up. Jen actually looked very nice here. I loved her makeup. I loved her hair. I loved the jewelry. I was like, okay, Jen, I'm loving this entire look. So it is kind of awkward between the two of them. But they sit down. And did y'all people have to say, uh, well, Jen was like, should we order? She was like, yeah, we should order before. Before what, Heather? Before she goes to jail, okay? <laughs> yeah, let's go ahead and eat some good, good food before they send your ass away. <laughs> I'm kidding. But they start getting into the conversation and Heather said that she wanted to be there for Jen because when she first got divorced she wanted to talk to somebody she wanted somebody to be there for her and Jen did say that she needed a friend so she was happy that out of everybody Heather answered the phone and she's going to be that one remember she did say that in Colorado that she wanted to be there for her because you're not supposed to turn your back on your friend so she's doing exactly what she said that she would do Jen goes into the story of what happened she got the call from Sharif's phone and it ended up being somebody basically I don't know she said she thought it was a GA somebody that he's usually with I don't know what a GA is they said that uh he was sick she got in a car and next thing you know on the side of the road she being pulled over by a white minivan 
and a black SUV. Her initial thought was she, be, she was being kidnapped, but then they said they're from New York. They want to ask her a few questions, and she's actually being arrested. So they took her somewhere in Decker Park, wherever that is, and they cuff her to a chair. So she's trying to figure out what's going on, and Heather was like, right, like at this point, I would need to call my attorney. Jen goes and says that she didn't feel the need to call her attorney because she didn't do anything. And I would still want to have my attorney on speed dial because what are we talking about? I Y'all ain't about to have me handcuffed to no chair if I didn't do nothing. What? Now, Jen starts to talk about the whole Omar being held at gunpoint along with her nephew, Dwayne. And remember, I did say that that's something that's very hard to deal with being black in America. We already know that whole situation is just very shaky, uncertain, and very traumatizing. So Jim was saying, you know, they raided the house with AR-15s and um, with her son being a black man, you know, they teach, we have to be taught these things early on at an early age. You know, don't make any hasty movements, just cooperate. And she was saying it was hard because he, the the cops could have thought that he posed a threat and, you know, things could have went left. We've heard these stories over the years, time and time again. But I'm looking at Jen like, I get exactly what you're saying as a black person. I understand this, but it was giving me like fake. I don't want to say fake. It was giving forced. Like, girl, you're forcing tears and I need people to stop doing that. You do not, and I said this in at least two videos before, you do not have to cry to convey a message or for people to understand where you're coming from. Forced tears is just, it's making the situation worse to me because now I feel like you're acting, okay? Stop doing that. Of course, you want people to sympathize with you because your son has been... Um, exposed to this type of situation, but it's also because of you, a result of what your ass has been up to. I don't know what the hell you've been doing behind the scenes, but you scamming the elderly has led to this point, so you need to take accountability for this shit. As far as Stuart, child, she said that she seen him in that little room, and he was like, I'm sorry. Okay, so we already know your partner in crime has something to do with this. Now, all of a sudden, the, he's not your business partner, but we all know y'all was working together. Y'all was in cahoots, which is why both of y'all end up getting locked the hell up. And Heather is peeping that she's trying to make it seem like, you know, she's distancing herself from Stuart. But no, that is your right-hand man. You work with him. We got you on camera saying that, you know, he's making you money, blah, blah, blah. So it's like... Sis, um, you and Stuart was up to some shit. Or is she trying to make it seem like Stuart put her up to this or he set her up, whatever the case may be. Y'all was doing something together. So then they start talking about Vail and Heather is saying, well, we all started trying to piece things together after you left. Lisa called all nine of her lawyers and she wanted to see how this is going to look on her end. You know, she didn't want this to create a bad image on her, blah, blah, blah. And Jen is feeling some type of way because remember, before all of this happened, Lisa was the one who was talking about loyalty and how she wanted to be there for Jen and she was a strong advocate for Jen's shot and then shit really started to hit the fan and then the bitch went ghost and she don't want nothing to do with her right now because she just feels like this is too much. So then they talk about Meredith and Meredith says she's completely done. She wants nothing to do with Jen and Jen starts to cry because she's confused. Girl, she don't fool with you. She wasn't fooling with you when you apologized to Brooks and all of that. So she says she wants a big, I'm sorry from the brunettes once she comes out of this thing innocent. I said, okay, girl, we're going to see if you come out of here innocent. Because uh, one thing about it, Jesse Smollett, that's all I'm going to say. <laughs> Whitney, this skincare line better work the hell out. How dare you try to apply for a million dollar line of credit? And if that doesn't work out, then you gonna need 2,500K from your husband and you didn't run it by him. And then you talking about some of you bad with money. Okay, girl, 
you better be out here hustling hard for this skincare line because you can't be trying to spend that type of money and not running it by your husband who is apparently making all or majority of the money. I know you bringing in something now because of this show, but girl, no ma'am. Mm -mm. And you laying it all on the line. And one thing about it, Mr. Justin, how are, you, how are you of a certain age and ain't got your teeth fixed? You are of a certain age and you got some coin and you ain't think to get your teeth fixed? I can't stand that. Now, listen, as somebody who does need some dental work and my bottom row is crooked, okay? No shame. Trust and believe if I had the money because we all know that huh, dental work is very pricey, okay? But if I had the coins, these teeth would be corrected. I would have my braces and life would be good. But being that I don't, I work with what I got for now, okay? Because in my situation, is a lot better than some other people. So I'm grateful for, you know, that we just here. Mr. Justin, I'm going to need you to go to your nearest Salt Lake Dentistry and go ahead and get them teeth corrected. Oh dentistry and then head over to your nearest orthodontist i don't know if you need to go give the nearest whatever get them damn teeth corrected because i was distracted the whole time mary is a hoarder who switched out her green carpet to blue carpet y'all remember she had this whole storyline that she was hiring her cousin as a contractor and she was talking about she had green carpet and like what happened to that whole storyline like we didn't get an update on the construction process but they did do a little pan around her house and I see that she has blue carpet so I don't know if she replaced the green carpet. Nonetheless, she's a hoarder. She done hired somebody to come over to look at that damn clutter of a bedroom of hers and then her closet is cluttered as well. Girl, you need to get rid of all of that shit. Just like the organizer said, if you don't naturally gravitate to it, then you can put it in bins, you can put it in storage, but most importantly, you need to give some of that shit away. Now, I know that, you know, watching Erica De Niro's video, she did say that certain designer pieces they do appreciate, but um, I'm not into designer clothes, so really, I didn't even know that. So whatever, you know, is an investment, keep that. But half of that shit is just literally that shit that just so happened to have a high-end label on it. Girl, you don't even know how to piece the shit together. Get rid of it. Because it's really a cluttered environment means a jumbled brain, a jumbled mind. You can't see straight. And that's why I had to get my shit together in this room. I went to Houston last Thursday. Today? Today, I finally decided to unpack my bags. I cleaned the hell out of my room today just to get a brand new start, a good productive Monday, and I've really been doing everything that I saw out to do on my checklist. The only thing I didn't do as of yet is um, put some more ornaments on the tree. I don't know why I was so slow with doing the tree this year. Like, everything else is good, but, like, the tree... It's like 75% done and Christmas like next week or something like that. But whatever. Um, that's because I wanted I wanted longer um ornaments. Y'all know they got like the long bulb ones and then they have the bald ones. I wanted the long ones just to add more dimension to the tree, you know. Then I was playing around with ribbon and it actually looks nice. So I was like, I need to go to Target and get some more ribbon because it wasn't enough. But yeah. Nonetheless. Girl, you can't think straight when you got a cluttered ass environment. And I feel like that's probably why she has an extraness of kooky about her. Because, sis, you got too much shit going on. Uh, aside from you uh, manipulating your congregation, aside from you uh, marrying your grandpa pop, all of that shit. You got too much shit going on. I'm going to need you to get your life straightened out. And I can't wait to see what the end result will look like. I feel like I was going on and on about that. And also, um, I meant to mention this last week. When Mary said that she was born into money. No, you're not. No, you're not. You're not, because if that's the case, you would not have to marry Robert Sr. If you was born into it, it would have simply been head, handed down to you. And you and your mama wouldn't have been fighting about who going to sit on Grandpa Pop's peen to secure the bag. Nonetheless, let's move on.
the brunettes go and do some indoor horseback riding. The horse is pooping and all of that. Ugh, I would hate that. I would want to go horseback riding, but then even when I was watching Ultimate Girls Trip, one of their horses was peeing and they felt it on their on their foot. Bitch, get me off of this horse now. Nonetheless, they start talking about Jen and how she reached out to Lisa, and Lisa is just is not feeling it right now because she thinks that the relationship between her and Jen is one sided. Jen wants to use Lisa up when she needs a friend. She needs somebody to talk to. But when they're out in public, she's paying Lisa dust and she doesn't like that. On top of that, um, Jen also cussed her out down at the photo shoot and she doesn't like that. She says she doesn't want to be her punching bag. So she feels like she's being manipulated. You feel like Jen is manipulating you? And just an FYI, She's not going to tell you that she's scamming old people. So, like, she's talking about some, I just feel like she didn't tell me what was going on and I'm sad. Who do you know is scamming the people and is going to be honest about it? I mean, don't get me wrong, honey. I live in Atlanta, okay? Niggas will tell you when they scamming. And I just want to stay away because when they come and lock your ass up, they will not be looking towards me. I don't play with thieves, bitch. Uh-uh. But if you got something for student loans to holler at me. No, <laughs> I'm playing. Nonetheless, she then says something about the blondes and how she's not going to be their punching bags either. Girl! So she's mad because Whitney is saying that Lisa brought Cameron to the Fresh Wolf event so Meredith can meet him. And she said, that's 100% not true. You're right, because the original plan was for Cameron, Cameron to meet Whitney, but she was sick, so she wasn't able to be in attendance. So you use your plan B, a.k.a. Mare, to go ahead and get the information from Cameron, and she brought it right on to the group. So your plan worked out either way you tried to plan it, sis. And then she says, don't try to start making or uh, blame me for stuff I don't do. Because then I'm going to start calling you out for stuff that you do do. Child, something like that. You know what it is? A whole bunch of do-do, okay? Ah, <laughs> oh, Lisa. Bitch, you're insane. Cut it out. Things are getting rocky between the brunettes, honey. Because listen, Lisa wants to put all of the blame on the blondes. And Meredith is like, her issue is with the whole Bell situation, Mary, who is the person that's being attacked, isn't allowed to speak her truth and stick up for herself. And that was bothering Meredith. And Lisa's like, okay, whose fault is that? The blondes. Girl, no. Just like Meredith said, everybody has to take accountability for the way the dynamic is within the group. She said, you can't put all the blame, or she, she said this in her confessional. Lisa can't put all the blames on the blondes, just like Meredith can't take or put all the blame on Jen. Everybody is responsible for the reason why the group is so fucked up. Everybody has had their hands in a situation at one point or the other. I said, I know that's right, Mayor. Take accountability, everyone, for your actions. But Lisa is not taking that for an answer, okay? She is like, absolutely the fuck not. All of that is because of bad weather, okay? They over here twirling up a storm down in the YouTube, YouTube, in the, in the Utah streets, okay? And she said that the blondes also count Lisa Barlow's in their sleep. One Lisa Barlow, two Lisa Barlow. I said, watch, that's, that's going to be a little moment for her child. Lisa is so self-absorbed. She thinks that people are manipulating her and people are being manipulated by other people. But the thing is, because she also said that the blondes is just as bad as Jen. No, girl, you're just as bad as Jen if you want to go there talking about manipulating the people. You, Jen and Mary are manipulators. And by the way, I caught Mary in the beginning telling Robert Sr. she felt like they were trying to play on the brown girls. No, well, guess what? Because the women of color are out here scamming the people, okay? If y'all was out here doing the right thing, then y'all wouldn't be called out, okay? Keep that in mind. Don't, don't make this a race thing. 
you out here doing something to your congregation. Okay? And I feel like the proof is in the pudding just off of how she talked to people. She thinks she got or somebody. She feel like she could just talk down to people. No, ma'am. I can tell that's exactly how you talk to people in your congregation. Remember when she did that podcast, she told that man, uh-uh-uh. You're doing too motherfucking much when it comes down to this prayer. This is how you do it. No, because I actually agree with her when she said that. <laughs> Ooh, wee. I did not want to go through watching um Jenny again. I just was not interested. I told, I don't know if I told y'all this, but I watched this last night. And now I'm watching it again, child. We just fast forward through all of that. She want to invite the girls to a Vietnamese dinner. When they have conflict in her culture, they eat together and they hash things out. But one thing about it, I do love me some pho. I was recently exposed to the uh, soup this year. And it's really good. And now I'm making myself want some. Ooh, maybe I should get some this weekend. It's a place like literally two minutes away from my house. And it's really good. I think I'm going to do that. Mm, and it be all hot and, warm, and spicy and warm and the noodles. And then you add the mint leaves. I never knew that mint would taste so good in the soup. Shout out to my mama for putting me on. She used to work for um, a Vietnamese company and she actually loves the food in general. But uh, she used to go up for pho. And then I finally got a taste of it and i understand why we see each other anyway let's move on child jen is trying to warm up to sharif with a box of popeye's chicken and she's telling him about what's going on with the ladies how he's how she's reached out to everybody and she's really disappointed in lisa because she's not showing up as a friend blah blah, blah and she's apologizing to him you know they took a vow for better or for worse and right now it, they're in the worst stage and you know she was like I'm innocent. And he was like, I know. Like, yeah. Are you really? Look, Sharif looks stressed out this whole time. She get to crying and, you know, she's trying to plead her case as far as being innocent. And he was like, okay, like, I, I hear you. Child, did she go and say that the retainer fee is a million and a half? Y'all, honestly, I didn't know what retainer was, and I had to Google it. It's the fees to secure a lawyer, a lawyer, consultant, whatever. Bitch, what? Ooh, just shy. You done got your family in some shit. And I don't know how much money y'all actually have because the people have been saying all them houses that y'all been displaying on this show from season one to season two are not y'all's. So I don't know what the coin is really looking like. It looked like you've been getting a lot of your fashions and things from scamming the people. Baby, we gonna see how long y'all coin stretch when it comes down to this retainer fee because, woo, that's a lot of money. And then she had the nerve to say that, you know, they've done so much for his family and they're not there for her. And, you know, Sharif is kind of looking like, bitch, hold on. He even got a little stern in his voice at one point. I said, oh, hold on, girl. He don't like you coming for his family. You better chill the fuck out. And one thing about it, I can't say, I understand, you know, you, you've been there for his family. But when it comes down to certain things like this. It would be hard to reach out to you. I wouldn't know what to say. I don't know if it's the right time or what. It sounds like they've been reaching out to Sharif or whatever. I don't know if Sharif was saying this just to, you know, kind of smooth things over and kind of, you know, get her to calm down a little bit. But um, as a family member, I wouldn't know when the right time would be. You also have to realize that you're going through a process, but some people are trying to process this as well and trying to figure out, okay, so when is the right time for me to reach out? How should I reach out? I don't know if they want to hear from me right now. I mean, of course, you know, when you go through stuff like this, you want to hear, but this is, it, it would be hard for some people as well. And then you also have to think about what you're being accused of. Some people probably are like, oh, bitch, please. I don't want nothing to do with that. Y'all holler at me when all this shit over with. So you just got to realize that, yeah, you're going through something right now, but some people are just unsure of how to really go about it. Some people may have jumped ship and not really gave a fuck because they could also be thinking, oh, bitch, so you was helping us out with stolen money? 
you just never know. I just feel like she and her feelings, her emotions are high right now because she feels alone. But don't be trying to take it out on that man's family because people deal with things differently. And they may just not know if they should reach out to you or how to reach out to you. That's it. Get out your feelings. Scammer. Jenna Scammer. Oh, yeah. Then she said she changed her number. So, girl, you got a whole new number. If they was trying to reach out to you, girl, they couldn't even reach you. What are you even talking about? And that's I told, that's when she reached out getting mad. I told you, my mother, my father, my brothers, my sisters, I've been trying to be the gatekeeper. Bitch, I told you. Stop playing with me. Stop playing with my motherfucking family. Okay, sweet. Don't swing on her, because, I mean... You was giving me real stern. You was giving me real... Bitch, I said what I... Beep, beep. But we don't condone that type of shit. But I, that, that sternness in his voice, I said, oh, hold on, okay. He meant that. Jen, you better stop disrespecting his family. The girls are on Operation Take Mary Down, okay? We are at Whitney Rose's skincare line photo shoot with no product in sight. Jenny was right. Um, it's Jenny and the blondes. And uh, Jenny invites them to fall night. They're all going to come. Previews for next week look like it's going to be good as hell because Jen is showing up. Okay, she's inviting everybody. So um, they get to talking and Whitney said that she's been struggling with the dynamic of this friend group and she got Cameron's number from Angie. Remember Angie? Angie, where the hell you been? I think that Angie, yeah, I think that's the Angie who they've been talking about. But anyway, um, she got the number. She got on the phone with him. And her and Cameron talked for three hours. And she said, if what he's saying is true, then Mary is bigger and badder than the information that Lisa gave us, honey. Miss Mam is on some shit. But she said she's not going to confront Mary about it. She's actually going to go to Lisa. And she's going to tell Lisa about it. And she said if we're going to go against Mary, she needs the whole squad behind her. I said, okay, listen, Miss Ma'am. If you need the whole squad to take on Mary, this y'all better be coming out with some shit that is worth our while. Okay? If y'all need a whole army to get through to Mary... Now, we already know Mary got Jesus on her side, okay? I said that Mary got the voodoo for you bitches. So, I guess you need to squad up. You might need to carry some garlic with you. <laughs> Why is that garlic like she a damn vampire child? They need some type of barrier, okay? To keep, to keep the spirits up off of her. I, I don't know, but... Y'all saying that Mary ain't want to fuck with. Y'all better make sure that y'all got a shield of some sort on, okay? The helmet of salvation, some something, okay? Now, the real churchy people don't come after me because I'm making jokes, okay? It's just jokes. Nonetheless, yeah, she is saying shit is about to get real. She knew Mary and her family for a long time. So, if she going to come after her, she want to make sure that she got some hard facts behind it. I said, okay. Listen, I'm just interested to see how this shit is going to go down. It's going to look like a good-ass episode next week. Let's get down in the comments to talk, y'all. I'm ready to eat, and I'm sleepy, and I'm just ready to relax because I've been moving around all motherfucking day. But let's get down in the comments and talk, y'all. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to my channel. And I will see y'all in the next one. Bye.